to do a tutorial on the shelves that I made for the bathroom. Let me show you what I did. So this is my son's bathroom and I had this wall that I needed to do something on. Um, so I took peel and stick flooring and made this wall uh, because I didn't want to do, I mean you can take like extra adhesive and put it behind it and then put it on the wall and it would probably hold really good but my thing was is if I decided to take this off the wall that would just rip the sheetrock down so I just used the glue that was on there to hold it up and then I took carpet tacks and used them to attach it so they look like it's uh i've still got some to do but anyway it makes it look like there's nail heads holding it up which it's given that whole rustic look it cost me about 30 dollars to do this whole wall the little pieces are like 98 cents a piece and um it it probably took about 30 pieces to do this wall so after I got done with that, I had already planned on putting up some shelves here. I couldn't get the right color stain and I wanted it to match because I love this wall so much. So I decided to cover the shelves with the peel and stick tile. And then I used the tacks again to attach it. So it turned out, I, I'm really happy with how they turned out. They look great. So I'm going to show y'all how I did this. So to build your shelf, you need one by fours, one by sixes, and two by twos. Then you're going to cut the one by fours that are for the side. I'm using this tape measure just because it's easier for y'all to see. It's five and a half inches because that's how wide a one by six is, is five and a half inches. So, you're going to cut one one by four the length that you want your shelf, two one by fours that are five and a half inches. Then you're going to nail the two one by fours at the end. Then, when you do that, you're going to put your one by six inside. And you're going to measure how wide you need your one by six. So, in this case, it was 22 inches. So I cut two one by sixes, 22 inches, one for the top and one for the bottom. Then I nailed those together, which forms you the box. Then you're gonna measure your hole, which is gonna be 22 inches because you cut the two one by sixes that are 22. You're gonna cut a two by two that that's long. I did it a quarter inch less just to kind of give me a little room to play just a touch but it's still a lot I mean it's really close so then once you cut that you're gonna cut for your supports to two by twos and these are only gonna be four and a half inches is all I cut these so that way when they go in they press against the front so that way then when you get ready, which I will, I don't know if I'm going to show you on the wall because I don't have any place to put this up right now, but what you'll do is you'll go in and take three screws and screw this to the wall. And then once you do that, you will slide this onto that and take screws, three screws and screw them down at an angle so they can go. Also, if you wanted for extra support, I didn't do it for mine because mine are pretty hard on there. You can mark on your top where the pieces come out and screw it there too to help hold it on. But I can just do these. You just do it in an angle. Don't do them too close to the side because it'll split it. But do an angle probably I would say about a half an inch and angle it back and screw it into the tube of tube. 
So that's how you make your shelf. Now I'm going to show you how I cover it. So this is what my box looks like. You can use any vinyl towels. It's luxury vinyl planks. Um, I just got these at Lowe's, but they, I mean, I even found some the other day that were looked really nice at Home Depot and they were 89 cents a piece. So, um, I had bought a whole box to do that wall. So, this is what they look like. It's got peel and stick on the back and, uh, you just want to cover your board. So, what I did I don't like using a utility knife. That's just me. So I use cutters. They are tin roof snips or tin snips. They are straight. They're not angled so I can cut it straight. So what I did is I marked this on top. There's going to be like a little bit of a line back here. It's about a quarter of an inch. but. On mine, even though that's there, looking at it, unless I go like lean way up, up underneath it, I can't tell that that's a little, a little gap there. It doesn't bother me that there's a little gap there. So I just take this and mark where I need to cut it, and it makes a mark. Then I take my snips and I cut it. It's not perfect, but I'm not a perfect person. If you want perfect, get you a utility knife, a straight edge, and cut it, and then snap it. I just rather use those. That's just my preference. So then you take and peel that off. You're going to place it all the way to the front edge, all the way across, and on the other side, and you're going to press that down. Once you press it down and you've got it on there good and make sure that it's the, the lip is right all the way around, you take the carpet tacks and tack it down. I am not going to hold this with my fingers because I like my fingers and I don't want to bust them. So I just, you take, hold it, I hold it with some little needle nose pliers, needle nose pliers. And then just tack this onto the, the wood. There, that part's done. So then you're going to want to do the other side. And also too, and I'm going to show you this in a few minutes too, what I did is, because I didn't want my nails like all the way up against the edge, and you can see that it's like holding up, I'll turn my hot glue gun on before I put my piece across the front, and I will shoot hot glue in all these spots and press it down just to hold it down because this stuff is not sticky enough to stick to this wood. So, but we'll do that in a minute. So then... I take my other piece for the bottom, top, whichever one you want, mark it again, and cut it. Peel it off, stick it on again. And nail it. And I found out that it's you can do it two different ways. I had one bulk on me a little bit. That was the reason I started having to use the glue, but uh Either you can start in the middle and go out, or start to one side and go over. It does a little bit better. Don't try to do outside here, then here, because then you're going to have a pucker. I learned that the hard way. 
Don't laugh at how I hold my hammer. I know I'll, if there's any guys watching this or laughing right now. Because, yes, you're supposed to hold it here, but I don't have the accuracy. There. And <laughs> now I just bent one. And my phone's going off. And I gotta go find my phone. And you're gonna find some of them on this wood. You hit them and they're re it's really hard. <laughs> know why. All right, let me answer my phone. Um, because, hey, I'm a realtor, and I have to stop to answer my phone. And that's just somebody telling me something, and I don't have to do anything. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to glue these sections so that they won't stick up so I got my hot glue gun here I peel up just a little bit squirt a little in press down and then hold then I go to the next little section if it's not sticking up see like that one's not sticking up I'm not gonna mess with it but like this one is sticking up oh I need an extension cord you go there there just kind of throw some glue all down in there and press and hold it until it dries you got to make sure you take that glue off all right that side's done let's do the other side I'm messing up my rug. Oh, I'll we'll throw those over there for right now. <laughs> Alright, so that's all done. Now we need to do the sides and the front. And the reason that you want to do the top and the bottom first is so that the front piece will cover the sides i mean we'll cover the top and the bottom the edge because you want it a little bit bigger so to do this i will take let me glue this a little bit too the ones in there i didn't have to do the sides because there was walls on each side so you didn't see it so if you have that kind of thing then you're not going to want to have to mess with doing the sides in there I didn't so but for this example I am going to do need some more glue in there okay so that's all marked and done now I'm going to do the sides now, I'm going to use the pieces that I used to cut off and do my sides. Because you want to do your sides next. Because the front's what everybody's going to be looking at. So, you want, when you cut the front piece, you want it to cover your sides and the top and the bottom. So, I wanted on mine, just because my husband made fun of my cuts. It's not straight. It's not perfect. So, I like... To do my cut piece on what I'm going to call the top of my board. That way it looks, I have it all uneven on the same side. So you just mark it again on the inside <laughs> and then drop your board and then just cut it out. And then again, and then we 
can use that for the other side. Oh yeah. I didn't have to do the sides, so I turn, I make sure I do all my cut sides the same way. So every place that I cut, because they're not perfect, is up. So I stick this on here. And cover it up. Make sure that you've got the top and the bottom piece covered. Everything's covered. And then we get to nail it in. And you don't have to be perfect where you put the nails in unless you're just like OCD. But that's the whole, I think, the whole cool thing about this whole thing is it's not perfect. That's what I was trying to tell my husband. Because he was like, oh, you're cut wrong and all this. Yeah. We're doing farmhouse look. We don't have, it doesn't have to be perfect. So, so that is pushed on. That's done. May need a little bit of glue on this corner just to make it where it won't angle out. dry. <laughs> Make sure it's dry before you let go. All right, that one's done. We're going to do the other side the exact same way. going to do is the front and to do a whole shelf because of the size that I have because these are three foot long you end up with a wasted piece which one of them I got to use for the sides but you're gonna end up needing uh, three full pieces to do a shelf um so it's three dollars so now I'm gonna because I want doesn't matter which ones you top and what I do too to figure out which I want the top of them I mean like this one's a little you can see it's a little uneven but hey it's on the top of the shelf nobody's gonna notice it <laughs> not unless they get up unless the real tall man but hey us women we're not gonna care all right so you want to make sure you're outside your edges a little bit to cover that Mark it across the bottom. Whoop. Mark it that way. Got my lines. And cut it. And on a long one, I learned it's kind of hard to cut it all at one time and cut it from one side about halfway and then just go to the other side <laughs> again I personally don't want it perfect so it doesn't bother me that it's not take it peel it off my top piece is the piece that I cut because I want that to be my uneven. I'd rather the bottom to be even. Make sure you cover all your edges. Make sure all that's done. And stick it on. And then I put eight nails across the front just because I think it's pretty. It just looks real good. I just do on the outside edge and then work my way across. I want to say like these nails that I got, I got them at Walmart. I think they're like a dollar or two for a whole thing and there's um it's two ounces. So there's a, a bunch in there. And um, these are the number 10 by 5 8 inch. 5 8 inch. Mm -hmm. 
Then we want to glue again the edge because we just don't want it sticking up. I have an old glue gun, so my glue gun is not like the best. And press and hold. Um, because mine I couldn't see the side. The only thing that you may want to do, I would want to do. It would just like I would want to do because you got to do the sides. Is you may want to rub a little bit of gray because you can see the white of the side of the vinyl so just to to make it look like real wood so there is my shelf and um i just use scrap one by fours and one by sixes that i have you got three pieces of the vinyl that's 98 cents a piece so that's three dollars um, and the tax were like a dollar or two and this one like I've done a couple of shelves out of it so I mean you can get a lot so but that's my shelf and that's how you make it so I hope that helped um if y'all anybody has any questions they can comment below um, this is gonna be my new channel and it is called the crafty realtor um, I'm going to try to post whenever I do projects and stuff on there. So, because everybody's always wanting to know how did you do this or how did you do that. So, I really want people to be able to do this and learn that I'm not just, I mean, everybody goes, oh my gosh, you're so smart on how you do this. No, I just kind of wing it as I go and adapt as I go. So, um, hope you like my new project.